Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in this small world of ours. Welcome to Absolute Chat with your host, Darren Keenan. So what's been happening this week? Well, this chat is mainly about the Avengers Endgame movie. Uh, there might be spoilers, so I do warn you. I'm trying not to, but if you haven't seen the film, don't listen to this podcast just yet. <laughs> But if you are a true Marvel fan, you would have seen it by now. So okay, so as warned, it might be spoilers, there might not be, but just to be safe, and listen if you haven't seen Endgame. So let's start. Okay. What did I think of this movie? I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was one of the best movies I've seen in a long, long, long time. Uh, and I cried and cried and cried. I know it's a bit embarrassing to say, but when you watch other people who reviewed it, they say the same thing. <laughs> they totally do. Um, talking about it now is easier after about three or four days. Because uh, the day after, the day after I watched it, I talked about it, and my eyes welled up to tear again. The way I see it is if you've been through the Marvel Universe since 2008, since Iron Man, and watched every film as it's been released, and get to the characters, this is definitely a big emotional film. But if you joined it recently, say from like Black Panther onwards, well, you might not be so emotional. It's just that you get used to the characters, you get, yeah, it's, it's like anything really, isn't it? It's like growing up with a family, but it's the 11 years of your life devoted to this to these characters so yeah i'm not going to go into much detail about why i cried just in case you haven't seen it and you are listening <laughs> but why is it so good why does it make you emotional i'll try and talk about the best i can but to me to me the story it was just unbelievable. The acting was just far superior. I mean, you watch the other Marvel films, you see these characters like Ant-Man and, and all the characters who belong in the universe, like Hawkeye and, and Black Widow. And you see them previously, and yeah, great. But in this film, the acting is far superior, far better. They, um, <laughs> well, Hawkeye's the best example the beginning of the film where his family vanish and you see him become a bit of a bad guy but he does it in a fantastic way you can understand why he is the way he is and you know it's <laughs> that's just the way it grips you. you you care for these characters you care for these people um i know it's a movie yeah i know that but it's just it's an escapism from this crappy world we live in to a better world, <laughs> which doesn't exist, but exists in the movies. Um, I'm just trying to think of things I could say to really not spoil it. To begin, the first part of the film, the first part of it is, is generally people getting used to half the population gone. I mean, it shows you in New York, it shows you other places where it's desolate. But in the film, you, you have to do that because it shows how devastating it is. But in reality, it's still be busy. New York still will still be busy because half the population of New York is still busy. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of half of them, and it will still be a thriving population. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the way they did it, you thought like, "Oh my God, how could they get out of this? How the heck can they do this?" Uh, and then you got the the rat that saves a day um, for other reasons, and it brings into the process of time travel and I love the way the reference back to the future in the movie now and again they do it about two or three times that's a really really good touch you know the directors have done fantastically um, because it makes it all for the next part of the film where the Avengers split up and go to different time periods in the movies like the first Avengers movie was another movies and, and the, they go back to to do something <laughs> to salvage something and 
just the way they've done it, it's just brilliant because it goes back to the old movies, but it goes back in a different way, it goes back to a different perspective and a different camera angles. It's like, wow, you know, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. And then, uh, and it's just the teamwork in the do, the teamwork in. I mean, because you've got Captain America, you've got Iron Man who fell out in the Civil War. They have to patch up the differences, and um, they haven't really met since then. So, and it's just, um, it's yeah, impressive. It's good, and even though people don't like the way that Thor turned out, I thought it was quite comical because him himself is a, a funny guy. You know, he's, when you see his YouTube videos, like he's, it, it's just brilliant. He's just, he's got true natural humour, and I'm so glad he's in the Guardians of the Galaxy now. Because when he was when it was in the Infinity War when he met up with you know the Guardians of the Galaxy, the humour was fantastic between him, between him, you know, and Chris Pratt. It was brilliant, brilliant. And seeing that in Guardians of the Galaxy three would be a bonus. It'd be really good. Hopefully it will all go up and incorporate all that. Because I don't know anything about Guardians of the Galaxy three. Uh, I could keep talking, talking. I'm just trying to think of different avenues that people have mentioned, but people have mentioned all about the film. I mean, there's lots of Easter eggs, lots of throwbacks, lots of, you know, things that if you've been through it for the past 11 years, would you would go, wow, oh my God, wow, you know. And how can I explain the end, the last hour without spoiling it? Please, please, if you have not seen it, this film, do not listen any further because this will spoil the whole ending. I've warned you. <laughs> the the fight scene is just oh my freaking god! Um, oh, wow, uh, it's just it's just phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, here they are trying to fight off Thanos, and Thanos is almost killing them, killing them, and Oh, it's, yeah, they're thinking, oh my god, they lost it here, they lost it. Um, but prior to that, uh, the gauntlet does get activated and it goes to this fight scene. And then, after the fight scene, you see these portals open and you see like the Black Panther, you see Spider Man, you see every single Marvel <laughs> character, um, you know, appear. Out of all these uh, thousands of teleporters, the Doctor Strange uses, and oh my God! I mean, you got Thanos, you got his army behind him, then all this, and this, and it's just you just start crying, thinking, "Oh my God, look at this!" And you got you got Spider Man, um, mm, Spider Man, Spider Boy, they want to see it, <laughs> Hawking Iron Man and stuff, you know, like welcoming back. Yeah, and then the best part of the movie takes place as well. It's a bit where um, Thor gets his hammer and he pulls it towards him but it goes straight past him and Captain America holds it and starts using it and it that was just a cinematic moment um, just totally mind blowing, you know. I mean it's been it's been almost a week since I've seen it and talked about it now, it still makes me wanna well up and cry, you know. It was just, it's just everyone's dream, just the film, you know. Oh, I keep saying you know a lot. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you get you get the part where the gauntlet gets tossed around with all the stones in it, and then Thanos manages to get it, and you got Iron Man trying to get it off him, and Iron Man pulls the fasty, so. Again, if you haven't seen the film, don't listen to this part, please. <laughs> the bit where um, Thanos gets a glove with the, and starts and goes to click his fingers and nothing happens. But before that, Iron Man has managed to take all the, the gems off his wrist, and Thor's there going, "Oh, what?" You know, and then you've got Iron Man projecting a, a virtuality glove, and he puts the stones in it. And then he clicks his fingers, and then all of Thanos' guys and Thanos himself vanish, just completely 
vanished like the end of Infinity Wars. And then you've got Tony Stark lying there dying. And yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's emotional. And they all, most of them gather around him, help, help him. But you've got the thing in his chest that's closed. It starts to fade and fade, and then it goes out, and then Iron Man passes away. And the funeral scene, it's just, <laughs> wow, one of those wow moments. Um, because since 2008, Iron Man was the first movie. He's the one who, you know, his first movie started it off. I know he wasn't the first Avenger, but it was, <laughs> it, it was him who, his movie made it. And then he handed it. He saved the world, saved everyone. And you know, you've got all these camera pans around all these people at the funeral. Then you've got the lad from the third one. He's actually standing there, a bit more grown up, of course, because that was years ago. But there's no Captain America. Um, well, no, there is actually, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, Captain America is the next scene because you have to cry over Iron Man dying. You've got Captain America who goes back to take all the stones back to the places where they got them from. Um, that's where the time travelled, of course. And of course, Captain America, they're waiting for him to come back, and they've got to count down in seconds, and he doesn't, Captain America doesn't come back, does he? So, for them, them it's about 15 seconds, and nothing happens, and then they see someone sitting on the bench, and it's Captain America, about 75 or 80 years old, he didn't come back, he just lived his life, he danced with his girlfriend and had a good life. And he's sitting there, an old man. And he's, it's, oh, there's lo lots in the movie like that. I mean, it's it's just a, a, the best ending you could ever have on any movie in the whole world. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm... 10 out of 10, 100%, and I can't wait for it to come out on Blu-ray. I'm actually going, watching all the Avenger films one by one in the right order, well, the order that they came out in the cinema. And I'm up to, I've just watched Captain America, The Winter Soldier. So I've gone through a few already since watching. And honestly, it makes a difference, because when you watch Iron Man and Captain America, you know what happens to them in the future. and. There's bits in Captain America where he's going, he wish he had the last dance and stuff like that, and he wished that. But you know, now, no, he did it. He did it. And Iron Man, you know, it's it's little bits in them films thinking, wow, did they know the ending when they made these first films? Do they know how it's going to end? Because it just clicks like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say, really. There's lots more I can say, but I won't. Um... If you want to ask any questions, just leave comments and then I'll, I'll answer them. But um, yeah, thank you for listening to this podcast. I know it's a bit different than the rest, but I just wanted to give my view, proper views on Avengers Endgame rather than a vlog, rather than a podcast. Okay, until next week, live long and prosper, or whatever they say in any world. See you next time. Toodle peace.